Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And this is ZD Donahue. And just prepare yourself for some bitching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so t- tonight we're discussing... This is one of those stitch and bitch things. Yeah. Tonight we're discussing uh, sewing for other people. And let's just get to it. We're talking or, about... Or, or when someone asks you to sew something for them. That's what we're talking right, about. Right. Okay. And well... Let- there, there's, there, I mean, boy, this is loaded. This is way loaded. It's emotionally loaded. It's informationally loaded. Um, you know, some people choose to sew for other people, and this is how they do their commerce. This is how they make their money, yeah. right? Uh-huh. So we can talk about that. And then there are people that get tricked. <laughs> into sewing for someone you know, or begged or asked let's or just whatever. Let's talk about that. Okay, we'll just talk about that Okay, one. and because it'll bring up, it'll bring up the other. Okay. Let's talk about getting roped into something. Which, okay, this applies to almost everything in your life, not just sewing. That's true. And sometimes, I'm just going to do this disclaimer here. Okay. First of all, Zini and I have done a ton of sewing for charity. I can't tell you how much pro bono sewing okay. I've done. And we've yes. done a lot of things that we didn't get paid for and we think it's fabulous. And we under, were happy when we yes, were doing under it. Under certain circumstances. Right. There is a review on iTunes about somebody saying that we just don't understand that when you give, you get back more than you gave. You know blah, what blah, though? Blah. That person also revealed herself as a new sewer okay. and I don't think she'd been through what uh, right, some right. of the situations so we've anyway, been through. Anyway, right. obviously there is right. a time and a place for charity and giving of yourself. Right. And that's not what we're talking about here. Okay. We're going to talk about the situations that you can get into when you can get taken advantage of and how to avoid them. And okay. Right. That's and what just, I want to talk about. Well, just okay? And a lot of it's even just how to Stand up for yourself and not let someone manipulate you into something. Because just, it, for some reason, people, does it, it's, I don't know. What is it? It's like you're wearing a sign. I so take advantage of me. I don't I don't know what it is about sewing. Um, well, I, I think that. Those who can't think it's easy, but they can't. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, and I don't know what, you know, if they, if their, if their parent or grandparent did make clothing or something like that, and they think that if you sew, you should be able to do anything for them or something like that and do it for free. Yes. First of all. Okay, my biggest tip, we could stop the podcast right here, is just say no. Right. Okay. When, when Well, and the problem is, is a lot of us do have problems saying no, or, or, or we just don't think of it right away as, yeah. of saying, no, I don't do that. Or just know the whole situation before you oh, say Oh, that happens yes. too, yes. Okay, because right. I have been asked to do a couple things, and I thought it meant one thing, and it meant right. another. Right, You know, so... Or, well, can you hem my bridesmaids' dresses too? Yeah. Ask how many bridesmaids there, there are. There you go. You're thinking three, four at the most, and the... Seven. Fourteen, yeah. you know, whatever. So, when if you... Ways to avoid getting, you know, taken advantage of. Okay. Or right. Obviously just never. I want to hear what Mallory never says. Never get in the situation right. in the first place. Never have a child who brags about your sewing. And says, talents. oh, my mom can do oh, that. Oh, my mom can do that. Tonight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay. Uh, the other thing is when someone finds out that you sew and you talk to them about how you sew and the first thing they say back to you is what can you sew for me? Oh my goodness. Red flag. Yeah. Red flag. Okay. If somebody told you, I, and I, I think this happens for sewing because I got lots of hobbies. Okay. Right. Oh somebody no. Says, it, yeah. Nobody gets me to refinish furniture for no, them. Right. If somebody, even, I, I'll say I dance. No right. Like, can you give me free dance lessons? Right. You know? Oh, we have a boat. Oh. Can I have can, a free ride on Can your you boat? take me for a free ride yeah. tomorrow? No, but right. it's like if you sew or knit, they're like, well, you could make me this hat. Right. Well, you could, you could learn yourself. You, or I was yeah. gonna say something else. Okay, <laughs> red flag when someone 
just immediately goes to that. Right. Or they say something like, oh, I had this thing I've been wanting. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I have I've had this thing I've been wanting. Oh, great. I I don't oh, want well, anything. Oh, wait, let me stop. Wait, I'll no, stop everything. Let I'm doing. me stop my life. Yes. What would you like? What do you yes. want? Oh, okay. Yeah, I just think now, but I have come I've had people come to me in like a super appropriate way. So maybe we should talk right. about that too. They'd say, I know that you so. I have um a a a performance and right. I need this type of uh costume or costumes. Right. Would you have time? And what would be the materials and you know, the cost for that? Like when someone comes at you like that, that's a much more rational place well, to start. Well, first of all, they respect what you're going to right. do. You know, um, so if someone, if I mean, I guess if you say ISO and someone says, oh, my gosh, I'm in a really tight spot, and what could I pay you to blah, blah, blah. Right. And, okay, so let's talk about money. All right. It's not a dirty word. It's no. not dirty. Any? Do you go to work every day? Or maybe you stay home with children so as not to pay for someone else to watch your children? Right. Okay, so there's, like, that's, you know, money Or what would ways. you have to pay someone to stay that's at your right. house and watch your children? Yeah, that's what I mean, right? right. Okay, so right. money's not a dirty word, even if you don't work outside the home. It's how we, okay? it's how it works. It's how the world goes around, it's, everybody. Yes, so unless right. you're, if you're, you know, living off of something else, Great. Okay. <laughs> but um, if, if your grocery store takes something besides money, takes, I want to know about it. If somebody if it takes go, buttons, I want to go there. <laughs> no, if the grocery store takes, you know, I've been wanting a pound of ground beef. <laughs> can you give it to can me? Can you give it? No. You know, okay. So I, I'm, I, you know what? I'm not going to apologize. I was going to say, like, sorry for being, you know, bitchy or whatever. No. I think we get this kind of crap because we're women. We get it. It from- is. Me- I do think it's because it's a mainly a woman's, you know, art, art, our hobby. Yeah. And yes. it's also not only it the the patronizing and the lack of respect for the time. It comes from women too, right? So it's not okay. Which is so really like, awful feeling. It's it's an awful feeling, but. Right. I think it goes to show you how much they don't value their own time, too. Well, that might be it, too. Okay, so it's right. a reflection of that. Right. Um, well, there are people that will ask people to do everything for them. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, absolutely. and they think the world's supposed to wait on them. I mean, I, I've, I've run into so, a few. you right. know, I would say, you know, red flag if after the first thing you say to somebody is, you know, I, I right. sew and they say, I've been, want- I've been wanting something. That is so No, what that's they- what they say. Oh, I've been looking for someone that can do this for me. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not that bitch. Right. <laughs> We're going to have to mark this one explicit, I think. Um, so, I'm not that hag. Okay. So, uh, you know. I'm not that idiot. Yeah, whatever. If you share your skill, and, and let's just talk about, it's a little bit of a specific situation. Let's not say the lady's name, I guess. Um, but she had a, um, I think she worked in a school, and it was like a, a, a co-worker, like a cafeteria worker who, mm-hmm. And she said that this woman was desperate for. Um, she her words were, "She's begging me to do this for her for Christmas." Okay, and I'm just gonna say they were Christmas vests. Yes. Okay, let's talk about being desperate or begging for yeah. Christmas vests. Yeah. I understand. Like, I mean, I desperately want some things that I don't need, but like, we just need to recognize here that she didn't say, "I am desperate for." Food um, for my children. Yes. I am desperate for, like, wood to put in my right. stove to heat my house or something right. like that. Okay. So let's just, you know, talk about that. And, it, tur- you know, this woman in the group was originally like, you know, I'm willing to do this and, and and uh, you know, do it. Her thing was, what do I charge? How do I go about and she, this? And she was right. also like, I'm willing to be underpaid because this, this woman is so nice. This woman, you know, da 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 But then, like, things developed. Right. And it just turned out that this was not quite the warm, fuzzy interaction. Right. That it maybe originally appeared to be. Right. And so if somebody appears like they really want something, that doesn't always mean it that you should do it. Right, right. Like, because people come in the store, oh, in the do store, right. where, like, I actually have to, like, pay for something before I sell it to someone. Okay, right. you don't have to do that with your time, right? You can, like, right. you can really uh, shortchange right. yourself, right? So w- they'll be like, oh, well, I'd buy that if it was 
this price instead of this one. And I'm like, well, it's I, not. I can't, you know, I'd pay you to take it out of the store. So, like, why don't you think about your time maybe like that, you know? And are you willing to give of your time? Ab- maybe you are, you know? Right. Maybe it's something that you don't find to be a super big challenge now that turned out for this lady – Part of it was a big right. challenge that she wasn't used to, right? Well, this was like digitizing, making a vest and digitizing mm-hmm. some sort of design and then putting it on the design. And this was like for five children. And and it's also already December, you know, 5th or 6th or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, this lady ends up coming back to her with like, I can get that cheaper on eBay. And I thought, right. okay, she's not like that desperate. Okay. Because like, you know, I, I, right. the, the Desperation isn't a good thing for, like, it's 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 not. Um, well, sometimes it is manufactured by the person. It is it is imagined by the person that they're desperate. And I don't right. want to like. I've never met this woman who right. asked for these vests. Right. But you know, when someone, I I have seen this just happen as a retailer. Okay. Right. And as someone who employs other people, we were talking about that. Right. Seeing people come in and say, I need, 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 need this. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, oh, okay. Like, let's find a path to this. Right. I've seen people do that, like, with machines with me before. And then I've worked with them for hours and tried to help and help and help. And it just turns out they weren't willing to do or, or didn't have the means to get the thing. Well, or the and other that's reality are, are the or the other thing that's happened. We used to do embroidery yeah. as part of our business. Um, we actually had commercial machines at one time and we would have someone come in on Christmas Eve Eve mm-hmm. and say I desperately need these four things done. This uh, you know, it will my Christmas everyone and these children's Christmas will be ruined and it's the end of the world and if before, you do not do this. And before we talk about the conclusion to that story, Let's take a message break. Mom, I've done it. Uh Uh-oh. I have found the perfect laundry spray bottles, sourced them, found the perfect labeling stickers, and brought them to the public. And what do you put in them? We put vodka in one of them and your special disdain stain removal solution in the other and they are aluminum 16 ounce bottles not too heavy i was to say perfect weight perfect size not too heavy when you fill them perfectly portable for taking around your house leaving in your laundry room or out to your car to deodorize it after your baby's puked in it so do you give my disdain recipe to the world i do we give it away for free and if you go to sewhere.com slash clothing care, you will see these spray bottles and you can use a special discount code, vodka, to get 20% off the laundry spray bottles from ZD Sewing Studio. Good deal. So happy. So, 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 sewing out loud. Okay. So someone came in the store and asked you to embroider five Actually, things. Actually, they ask you. Hmm. Right. I'm thinking of a specific time. Yeah. But it happened to me, too. Uh-huh. No, it yeah. happened to me, too. Right. And Mallory accommodates this woman. And you can all, by the time I think the interaction, Mallory was getting fairly perturbed because this lady is taking a lot of time in, in what should have been a simple thing. Right. Mallory does this. We stay late so she can do this, so she can pick it up tomorrow on Christmas Eve Eve morning or whatever it was. And the lady doesn't show. Right. And then on the day after Christmas, the lady doesn't show. And now it's the next year, and the lady hasn't shown. And now we're deep into January, and finally she shows up, for these things that Mallory took the time to do, took it out of her holiday plans or whatever was right. going on to make sure this woman's family could have a happy, merry Christmas. That lady was tricking us. And here's the here's the thing. Boundaries are just right. important. I think that's maybe like where that, you know, red flag kind of right. goes up. Like you got to know your boundaries a little bit because, you know, the shop is closed on Mondays. Okay. Right. To the public. 
And I had one lady, she just told me she could not get to the right. store on Monday to, like, pick up her machine. It just right. could not happen. I thought, oh, or no, she couldn't get to the store any day but Monday or something right. like that. Monday was the only day, okay? Right. All right. So I said, all right, what time Monday? I will come here. I will open the store for you. Right. No, no. Doesn't show up. Right. Shows up on Tuesday. Right. And I just think, like, what's the thought process that goes into that? That goes into that asking. Like, I have never asked a business to stay open. We've we've stayed. I've stayed open for people who said, you know, I'm 30 miles away. I know you close at 4 o'clock. You know, could you stay open another half hour? I've waited two hours and they haven't shown. Right. Now I get a phone. Now I get a phone number like the pizza place right. when I order. Right. I mean. So, and it's not like we just always get screwed over no, all the time. No. Okay. But people will take advantage of you and you do have to watch out for yourself. When you put up those boundaries. Right. It doesn't make you into a bad person. Nope. It sets you up as a person that people will respect. Right. Right. It doesn't mean Well, and you unless you want to feel bad right. and be a martyr, you you need to yeah. think about what you're willing to do and what's comfortable. Now, you know, I did so for a living at Yeah, in, yeah, Is and done part this. of my life. Yeah. And I will tell you, wedding gowns was a big thing that I did. And when someone would call, I I was to the point where I would say, my minimum charge for a wedding gown is eight hundred dollars, and that is my labor. That does not cost. That you know, that is not material, any kind of material. And they go, "Oh, that's too much." And I'd say, "Well, I'm very sorry." Yeah. And that was it. Mm-hmm. The person who said, "Oh, that's fine," and I say, "You know, our initial meeting, I have a fifty dollar charge mm-hmm. that goes on." You know. This is this will go on to, you know, we'll apply to the rest of it. But I I do have a charge for co- consulting. Otherwise, I can be consulting all day and yeah. I'll never make any yeah. money. No. And that's why, like, this is where money is not a bad thing. Money is a thing that we use to place value on things. So right. if you're going to just, like, sew out of your home for free for everybody. Right. That's great. If it makes you happy, you know, do it. Okay. Right. But this is this is where this comes in. And you know, I when I was doing embroidery for people, I had a minimum charge. Right. And at first it was four dollars and eventually it had to go up to twelve dollars. Right. And I just wouldn't touch anything right. for less than twelve dollars. Now, things changed if I was doing like multiple duplicates. If you're doing is what six I things with yeah, exactly the same, the thing, same you know, thing, okay. The price goes the down price goes per down. piece. Da, da, da. Right. So I had this lady come in with this washcloth. Literally a washcloth. How big are washcloths? Like six inches by six inches. I guess. Or okay. I guess. And she came in and she said, I need something embroidered on the corner of this washcloth. And I said, Okay, my minimum is my minimum charge for something right. is twelve dollars, you know. And she was like, Well, this washcloth only costs four dollars. And I was like, Okay. All right. Uh, you know, and, and and I was like, Well, that's, I that's understand. my minimum charge. Right. You know? And um she then it told me to put like a I a letter on it, you know. And I was right. like, Okay, we pick out the color thread, great, you know, da da da. And then um I'm like about to embroider it and she calls and she asks if I can put like a mathematical formula on it. Like I'm not even making this up. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, and I was like she's like, Do you have these characters and these characters? And like, you know, we do have a lot of weird characters and right. I tried to accommodate. Right. And then I was like, No, we don't have a cosine or something. I don't know what it was. You know, I was like, no, I don't have that. I'm very sorry. You know, that would be like, I'd have to digitize that. Oh, well, oh, okay. Okay. And she called back again, you know, and I was like about, so I had to speak with her. Right. For right. Like, I don't know, 45 minutes total. Right. And then do the thing and cover the materials and everything. And I got paid 12 bucks. Right. Right. For Mm -hmm. like an, you know, an hour. Well, and I guess my question is, I wonder what she works for when she goes to work that's yeah. why we're just dis- right. and that's why i want to make right. it clear we're not this isn't just a bitch fest but that is right. why we are discussing these business models a little bit for right. you so that you can know maybe you don't have a store where you have to pay rent maybe it is in your house you know maybe or you don't have like any that. overhead but you still your time is worth something it Absolutely. is it is and you have to decide whether it's worth and it's okay to say no and it's okay to set boundaries mm-hmm. and it's okay not to tell people that you so do that's right well 
<laughs> that's absolutely And that's right. why people really, that's when, what, Whenever know. anyone buys a machine, especially an embroidery machine, I think that people get into a lot of trouble with this because what will happen is, you oh, I got this machine and I put, you know our monogram on all of our towels or, you know, oh, yeah. I may, you know, I'm making these wedding gifts. And so you're saying this at a non-sewing job that you have, sure. right? You know, someplace you work outside the home, say, or, or maybe you're picking your kid up from daycare and you say, oh, I made this, you know, I, I have this new machine. However, you're, you're talking about this new machine you have or this machine you have and what you make because you're excited and you like what you've done and you're proud of it. Right. And the next thing you know, that person that works next to you, that you're going to have to work next to for the rest of your life, maybe, right. or whatever, says, oh, you know, that machine that does all the embroidery for you? Because mm -hmm. that's what it does, right? You don't have to set it up. You don't have to hoop it. You don't have to use any materials. It takes none of your time. You just think, and it embroiders, right? right? Okay, that's how it happens. At least that's how, you know the person next to you thinks it have because we're having a family reunion and I would like you to do 20 towels by you know Saturday blah blah, blah. and she was your best friend before this at work right. your best work friend or whatever right. you you can't do it for free okay you just I mean or if you decide you've got to put some sort of parameter or our boundary on it right then and there you've got to do this up front and I tell people you might not want to charge but you're better. You have to say, you know, that's gonna cost me at least five dollars a towel. You know, you know, if you charge nothing, you have to. Ch I mean, you've got to charge. They can't come in every day and ask you to embroider something for them. The other for thing, free. The other thing is that we we will approach this two ways too. Someone will come in buy an embroidery machine we say hey careful people right. might want you to do right. lots of things for free and i'll give them the card of somebody who does embroidery right and that is that's a great thing to have right know an embroidery place close right. by or a tailor right. or something say, say oh you know i don't do that for other people but i know a lady that does yeah or you know i don't have right. i don't have the time this week right. or something or you know uh whatever and you, I guarantee you that will be better for the relationship than if you do those 20 towels and you try and I, I but, mean. Okay. Yeah. So we go this two ways. So there's the first one. Right. Way, okay. The other way is we will, I'll share my old price sheets and what other businesses right. are charging for embroidery. Cause I will, I'll have some man, I'm a pretty ambitious young woman come in the right. store and they'll get kind of a small machine and say, I'm going to monogram for people. And I'm like, all right, well, here's what you got to do. Right. You got to have a minimum. Right. Maybe you need to start off at 6 $8 right. and then go up to whatever, you know, da, da, da. And I will share this information with right. them, you know. And, and so we will – Talk about it both ways. You know, we're we're not right. like opposed to people sewing for other people, you know. Right. But yeah, we we do address both flip sides of the coin, but you have to know that your time's worth something. And this is also I mean, we're talking about embroidery, but this is also well, with yeah. alterations too. Uh huh. And a lot of times, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've altered a wedding dress as the wedding gift to someone. Right. Okay, and I make that very clear up front. Sometimes I tell them how much it would have been too, and sometimes they're getting like a three, two or three hundred dollar gift oh, yeah. from me. Oh yeah. Um, but you've you've got to and and don't charge two dollars to him a bridesmaid's dress. No. Charge some money. There's probably three layers there. You know, yeah. You need to make a list and just, and you need to know how to easily say that amount and let it roll off your tongue and when I think they that ask. Somehow we imagine that when people ask for something. Not everyone is asking for it. No, for a lot free. of people are more than willing I, to pay. I don't know what we're imagining that like everyone else in the world is completely destitute and can't afford anything. Like you go around and buy stuff all the time, don't well, you, what, listener? They will you let know? you hem their dress for you know four dollars, absolutely, and they will go out and buy a Starbucks drink that costs ten. Exactly, and it, it doesn't mean that that. But this is where it's your responsibility to set it is those your responsibility, right? It yeah, is. That's, it that's absolutely what I want to bring up. I'm not saying everybody's out to get you. Never sew for anybody, right? Set your boundaries. Know your limits. 
you know, don't get yourself in over your head either. Skill don't wise make or yourself wise. not like sewing right. anymore. Right. Don't put yourself in that position that that you have allowed people to use what you love against you. Because you you have to know that they're going to have to pay for it somewhere. And if right. they're coming to you to get it for free, that's not nice. No, it's not. It's not nice. No. Okay. And I, and I, I have to say, I've had plenty of people do that. Oh, yeah. I really have. And I've had plenty of people willing to pay. But I've certainly, or I've had somebody say, well, all you have to do is just turn that up and stitch it. And I, I feel like saying, Feel no, free. no, I've been sewing. I've been sewing for fifty years, and the skills that I had to learn to figure out, you know, how to cut that, how to, you know, what kind of fabric that, what kind of thread to put on that fabric, what kind of hem is called for, so that it's not wavy or funny or. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that went into me learning how to hem that. No, I love it when people come in the store, and we don't sew for people, and we don't do embroidery for people at the store anymore. And we used to kind of like have an alterations person or I'd take in like a little bit of work or, right. or you would or something you know and then well I need this patch sewn on oh well, I'll give you the name of somebody who can do that well it's really easy and I'm like then do it that is just right. the funniest thing to me well then you do it one of our answers now too is when somebody comes in and says I want to hem this dress we say well we have a thing called open studio on Wednesday and you can come in and hem that dress for yourself if you'd like yeah, an open you studio know. costs 20 bucks. And that's you know? 20 bucks. The, well, know. the other thing is um, if somebody starts to tell me, right, like, what I can do, right. like, I mean, I am just so immediately put off. Or I've had people even say, well, you got all these machines here. Right. What are you doing? And I'm like, I just want to say, get out of my right. store, you know. Well, um, and I have said to people, I'd be willing to sell you that machine you know, show you how to put that now, patch on. I have had people Now, before, I don't say that right off the bat. No, no. I, I think that sometimes people do get confused. They come in and they're like, oh, you don't do this? Right. And, you know, and I'm like, well, and I'll tell them what we do. Right. I will say, we sell machines and teach classes. Right. We don't do alterations. They'll go, oh, because I think I have had people come in before and think, like, I was denying them service because I, like, <laughs> didn't like them or something. And well, and we, ha- what, and we have know? the name of, uh, you know, Sewing several. The studio. Of, of yeah, P- yeah. Well, but we have oh, names yeah. of people that we give out and say, this person does alterations, uh-huh. you know, call them and set up an appointment. So yes. we, we do. I, hello, Nora. Co- yeah. She listens. Yeah, Nora she, listens. No, Nora listens. We keep Nora busy. That's right. Um, so if you are afraid that people are kind of taking advantage of you, like one of the things you can have is that information about someone to contact right. who can do it and who does that all the time, knows how to price it, do it confidently. And that's kind of what the member of the group ended up doing i think part of it she yes. she out you know she said she out, i don't do yeah. this part or whatever right. you know so anyway um, but the thing is is all the time it took her to coordinate oh, yeah. getting it done uh-huh. a different way was I her know. time too i mean absolutely yeah you gotta know I, yeah and and i just, and you you know it's funny how that thread went and what people Oh, it, Most people were saying, don't let anybody take advantage of you. It's a, such a Many sore were saying spot. that. It's such yep. a sore spot, and people get real passionate about it and stuff. Your experience is your own. If right. you've had just a great experience, you know, um, giving of your time and everything, like, great. You know, right. w- wonderful, of course. Right. You know, but we've we've been doing this a long time. And we've had a well, lot I of think, different I think it's just a warning is this is, this is part of sewing mm-hmm. that – can be an unhappy place. Well, and then most of the time it's happy. And then she also said, you know, I've got this feminist rant going in my head about how right. women don't value their time. And I'm like, yeah. And I think some people think women shouldn't value their time. Right. And some people think, oh, you should just do this, no questions asked. And that's ridiculous. I, but I, what is it about sewing? Because nobody asked me to come clean their house for free. I don't get it. That's true. It's yeah. it's a very sewing is a very right. very different kind of thing i don't i don't understand i think maybe a lot of people wish they had the skill yeah or something and and they don't so so i don't know well i think it's that you know what i think it is the cost of clothing is so cheap that's what it is that that people think they should be able to get something for nothing oh right well well how how uh, how many times did somebody bring me a wedding gown that they got on the internet for eighty dollars 
and they wanted it hemmed, and I said, that's a $120 hem. Right. And they're like, again, like your like your My washcloth. washcloth. <laughs> well, I only paid $80 for the dress. I know, but the hem is going to be 120 Well, I hope that lady's still enjoying her $16 washcloth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, oh man! What, I have so many stories about that. I. <laughs> it sounds like we just have a really terrible time at the well, store. Well, okay, not true. I'll t- let okay. me tell you a story. I have a story to tell you. Yeah. So, this was oh boy, twenty years ago, fifteen years ago, something like that. No, oh, more than fifteen, probably more like twenty. And this girl came in in tears, and she said, "I'm getting married in ten days." This is, you know, I just, I had this dress altered, and this is what it looks like. Uh-huh. Can I put it on and show you? And it, this girl was a trainer, okay? Uh-huh. So she was, everything was muscles. And right. this was a slim, slim, slim fitting, fitted, fitted dress, and it was a, like a, a silk charmeuse. So, you know, every, every line yeah, showed. Yeah, you can't be messing that up, right? No. Yeah. It was horrible. It. It just, you know, and she's like, I paid this amount of money for this dress. And uh, and I said, I don't know what I can do, but here's what we'll do. I'll try and, do, you know, I'm going to try and do this like in five days because we may have to go someplace right, else. Right, yeah. You know, if I, she goes, this was the dress of my dreams, da, 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 da. So anyway, I decided that I had to absolutely take this dress apart and make a new lining for it. Mm-hmm. And I did that. Now, she said to me, I don't care what it cost, you know. Well, as I was doing this, I'm thinking, this woman has no idea what, how hard this is. Yeah. You know, and what I'm doing, and I had to source the fabric, and fortunately, I, I knew where I could get some silk lining and all this and everything. And uh, So I did it. And it did fit her perfectly. It looked wonderful. And she said, how much do I owe you? Uh-huh. And I said, nothing. I didn't know this woman. And she said, oh, no. oh, no. And I said, no. I do not. I said, it would be really, really expensive if I really charged you what this was worth. Right. You know? And I said, I really would just like to give this to you. And she was a mess when she came in. Yeah. You know, she was an absolute mess. And a, like a mutual person had sent her to me saying, oh, this woman can do anything. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's scary. Um, I did get a gift certificate a couple of weeks later to a very, very expensive restaurant. Right. Okay. Um, which didn't even yeah, yeah, didn't right. even cover like no. the cost of the lining, okay? And that's but it, that's, but yeah. she made the gesture. Yeah. And do you know how many times somebody came to me and said, "Hey, I met this person, and they said that you did this miracle for them, and that, and you felt so sorry for her. You didn't even charge her." And I said, "I told her not to tell anybody yeah, don't, oh, no. that I didn't yeah. charge her." And I said, "I said, yeah, it was just a specific instance." So. You know, I'll tell you what, I got a lot out of that, that she told those people about. Oh, sure. That. And, you know, right. that's that's your decision. It was you know, my decision. She did not expect that to be free. No. And if somebody Absolutely. came to you and said, hey, can you do my dress for free like you did that, ladies? I mean, you just tell them to go pack. You know, bye. Yeah. You know? No, no. Yeah. No, she just said, whatever it costs, I don't care. This is my dream dress. You know. You know, I had a lady come in the store, and her daughter had borrowed a dress and ripped off ripped I the pull on the invisible zipper uh-huh. came off the end uh-huh and it was just so funny because I don't know what we'd been doing but like we'd kind of just been discussing this issue she said can you fix this or da 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 and I thought I think I know how to do that real quick you know I had to take right. off like this tab and right, then, right, know, right. put it back on and I was like oh and, and I got it done fairly quickly and she said what can I do for you you know right. or what da 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 and you know what I did I said you can buy a ZD Sewing Studio tumbler <laughs> for your drink because I would have, I, I, right, I right. would have charged twenty bucks right to touch it. Right, you know, right. I would have, and that sounds you know arrogant or whatever, but like like you said, we've got the knowledge, right. we've got the time spent right. taking right. apart zippers and stuff, right. you know. And I said, you can buy, you can buy this thing, and you can not tell anyone that I did this for free for you, right? You know, and I and I told her what we did that we sell sewing machines and stuff. Right. And I said, you tell people that yeah, if they you want tell a sewing people machine, they want sewing machines to come here. That's yeah, that's and what and I'll you do. Know, that that. 
that's good. I mean, and but, I know, think that's the fun. That's the fun part of giving your sewing away. Yeah, and that can happen. And then it can also happen that someone you do something for free for somebody once, and they expect it forever. So yeah. it's just the you know hazard of being alive, right? What about you know? the lady in the cinnamon rolls? Do you remember? Yes, that? I do. I do. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I think story. I think story time might need to be over. We're getting yeah. pretty long on the podcast. Don't pay your seamstress in cinnamon rolls. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. You don't even know if she's like gluten free or whatever. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, thank you all for listening. You can find us on Instagram at ZD Sewing Studio and you can join our Facebook group, The Self Sewn Wardrobe with Mallory Donahue. So long and so happy. And I mean, really happy. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit sewhere.com. 